What's going on guys? Welcome back to episode of Fishing with Flair. Ew. What's that on my shirt? Oh, that's much better. So today I'm bringing you a tackle organization video and I plan to throw in a little bit of time lapse in it and then as well as show you some tips and tricks on how I like to organize my tackle. Normally I'm excited for this kind of stuff. Today I'm actually kind of dreading it a little bit. Mainly because I have way too much stuff to do. I basically just procrastinated all winter instead of doing it and now I'm left with all of this. I basically have all of these tackle boxes stacked up, which are labeled and filled with lures. But my issue now is I've got a box like this that is filled to the top with bass fishing lures. Got a box like this that is filled with bass fishing lures, as well as all those big cardboard boxes up there are filled with bass fishing lures. Now I'm not complaining that I have too many lures. I am just letting you guys know for those of you who don't have a bunch, mo lures, mo problems. The more you have, it's hard, the harder it is to organize, but I'm gonna give it my best today. I've got, oh, and this. This has a bunch of lures in it as well. And you guys can see there, that's filled with lures. Sneak peek. And then once I'm done with lures, I will, I don't know if I'll do this today, but these, this is a big box filled with uh, lose reels in there. They're all brand new. Um, I put some line on a couple of them, but I have to put line on those as well. And before I start, I do want to clarify, I did not pay for all of these lures, nor did I pay for the majority of them. Most of these were given to me by sponsors, so I don't want you guys to think that I'm this spoiled rich kid that just gets all these lures and he pays for them or his parents pays for them. No, I get them for free most of the time from through sponsors, because I am blessed to have a fishing YouTube channel in which I can promote products on there. And to touch on that just a little bit more is even back when I was younger, 15, 16, when I first started my YouTube channel and I made those $600 Bass Pro Shops unboxings, all those Tackle Ross unboxings, just to let you guys know, my parents never, they have never, and I'm serious when I say never, they have never given me a single penny for any fishing lures, fishing rods, reels, anything like that. So, I know you guys think my, my parents spoiled me when I was younger and just gave me everything I wanted, but it's not true when it comes to bass fishing. With that being said, hard work pays off, guys. For you younger guys that don't think that you can acquire this much tackle and all that stuff like that, it is possible, trust me. I was in your position at one point where I only had one box filled with lures, and now I have way too many. But enough of the babbling, I'm going to start showing you guys how I organize my tackle. 20 minutes later. All right, guys, what I spent the last 20 minutes doing was bringing all this stuff to my garage. I was gonna do it in my room, there just wasn't enough space. I know the lighting isn't that great in here, but we're gonna have to deal with it. So in this box, filled with all my bait mate. This is uh, the fish attractant that I like to use. Nice big box of it here. Pretty much a lifetime supply of all the good stuff that I'm gonna need when I'm fishing tournaments and stuff like that. And there's a few other things in here, like some water bottles and bug spray, but for the most part, filled with bait mate. Good to go for the season. In this box, we have a lot of my extra stuff that I don't really use very often. Um, this was just stuff that I didn't have room for in any of my boxes. It's a nice big uh, plastic bin full of them, so I'm gonna see if I can get some of this stuff in tackle boxes. Here, again, some more lures. These are all brand new out of the pack. This is just stuff I haven't really gotten to touch yet. This box, I believe, has part of a tackle warehouse order in it, as well as just some random other stuff that, that I just haven't gotten the chance to use, but again, another box filled. And then this one, this one I showed you earlier, but this is another box filled with more brand new baits. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with the hardest part first, and that is gonna be soft plastics. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dedicate a different part of the garage for each style of soft plastic. So that would be flipping baits, Sankos, ribbon tail worms, straight tail worms, flukes, all that good stuff. And then I'm gonna basically dump all these bins out, as well as all of my soft plastics in these. Dump them all out, throw them into piles, so maybe like ribbon tails, flukes, Sankos, and then pick which lures I want in my boxes, then restock my boxes and label them. Got all the signs laid out. You see there I got this like ring of fire thing going on. This is how I'm gonna try it. We'll see how it works. So, got everything laid out here as you guys can see. This is all the soft plastics that I've got and they're all laid out. Now I'm gonna throw them into their individual categorized piles and then hopefully try to stack them in and then hopefully try to put them in those boxes right there. This may take a while, but hopefully you guys enjoy the time lapse. Got everything into piles now. It kind of worked. It kind of just blended together, but got ribbon tails, Sankos, toads. You guys think I like to flip and pitch very much? 
Got a lot of them. This is jig trailers, which they're kind of like craws and flipping baits. So these two kind of go like together. That's why they look like they're mashed. I only have a couple packs of lizards, a little bit of tubes. they are all my swim baits, trailers, big swim baits, that stuff. And then those are all my straight tail worms. Lastly, got my flukes because I am the fluke master. Good. How are you? Good. Good. Been in a hole where there's no cell service for the last two days fishing. Nice. Where have you been? box is done. Did uh, the swim bait box first. This is what I had left over. These were just some duplicates and stuff that I knew I probably weren't going to throw uh, all that much. But for my swim baits, I have all these big ones. These are like the big Shadowlicious ones. You can see I run them that way. And then all of these right here are the trailers, like the Gambler Easies and stuff like that for, for Chatterbait trailers, uh, swim jig trailers, all that kind of good stuff. So swim bait box, done. Tubes, flukes, lizards, and toads. Got those guys in this box. I know that's kind of a random random category is thrown together, but they're just baits that really just fit in this box well. Um, you know, these are the toads, like ribbits and stuff like that. These are flukes, and these are tubes right up in here. And uh, and then I've got a pack or two of lizards back there. Either way, got this box filled. Box number two done. Box number three complete. Ribbon tail Sanko box. Ribbon tails Sankos done. Box number four complete. Straight tail worms. I actually got a, quite a bit of room left. Those are all my extras. I decided I really don't need all those in here. So I don't know what I'm going to do if I'm going to find another category of plastics to put in there. I also just thought about maybe getting a small tackle box and putting drop shot hooks and drop shot weights in here because I have, these are my drop shot baits right here because I never really throw them. And then these are my uh, straight tail worms uh, for shaky heads and stuff. So I thought about maybe throwing my drop shot stuff in here, free up some space in my uh, large terminal tackle box. I don't know. I'll think about it a bit and let you guys know. Box number five for soft plastics, done. Got the craws, which this has basically my jig trailers, so craws like uh, Gambler Flappy Daddies and that kind of stuff, and these like Rage Menace craws, and then I've got some grubs in here. So essentially this is jig trailers, uh, but there's some craws in there that I would just throw Texas rigged. Well, I got the last box, flipping and pitching done. It's uh, filled with some baits there, and look at all the extra stuff I got. I have a lot more, all the extra stuff. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with all this, the thing is, I'm getting a new boat in a few months. Once I get that, it should have some more storage space so I can get a few more of those big boxes and then maybe put all this stuff in there. But for now, I'm trying to keep it down to six soft plastics boxes and, of course, all this stuff. So that's what I'm going to do for the soft plastics. These guys I might put in, like, some Ziplocs and label them, like, Pit Bosses and Gambler Ugly Otters. Label them and just throw them in, like, a bin. And that way, if I'm going fishing, I know if I'm going to use them, I can just grab those so I have some spares. So I've got my soft plastics done. These are the boxes that I have. They are all completely filled, so I have this for my extra stuff. So... Got some, I'm not going to name all of them, but you guys can see all these bags filled. These are just, it's just extras. It's basically what's in there and just some duplicates. Uh, just stuff I honestly didn't have room for, but like I said, hopefully I can figure out a new tackle system once I get a di different boat that's a little bit bigger. But that's soft plastics. It took me about two hours. Actually, not as long as I thought, but now it's the hard baits and this might take a while. Onto the hard baits, this is what I've got. Got the ring of fire here with all the categories of all the boxes that I need to fill up. Let's get started. Dumped out all the hard baits that I've got here. There's some soft plastics in here, but it's mainly hard baits. Let's get her done.
baits and buzz baits are done. Just had a few left over. Just gonna put those in like an extras pile. But I wanted to show you guys this quick tip that I uh, just started to do like five seconds ago. And uh, I've never seen anyone do this. I'm not saying that I am the original idea maker of this. But what I took is I took like a little clothespin, as you guys can see there, and I put the buzz baits on there. So you can see this. So you can throw them down there. If you want a white one, you pull. You pull this out and it comes with all the whites. If you want a white and shirt, true one, you pull them out and it comes with all of them. Same thing goes for if you want a black one. They all come together and all you do is you unhook the safety pin and pull which buzz bait you want out. It's pretty cool. Frog box complete. All right, just got my jerk bait and uh, lipless crank bait box done. I usually combine these two because I throw these two lures the same time of year. Uh, for the most part, it's just early springs. It's about the only time I bring this box out. So I got all my jerk baits. They're not, my jerk baits really aren't in any order. It's just how they fit. And then here are the original rattle trap uh, lipless cranks. And then here are red lipless cranks. Here are gold and uh, chartreuse. And then here are some sexy shad and more of like a chrome black back pattern there. And then these are all sexy shad right there. Stocked up quite a bit uh, in the off season, so I'm ready to get after some springtime bass. Just finished up my topwater box. Only had a few new baits left over. Looking good. This is exactly what I meant when I said mo lures, mo problems. Got these brand new square bills out of the pack, all of those, and there's still a little bit of space, but not much. So I've got to somehow get all this into hopefully one box. I got my square bills done. That's what the box looks like. That's what was left over. I am probably just going to throw those in another tackle box, label it extra square bills or something like that. But I actually think I put quite a few in there. And um, see, I got sexy shad on one side. Uh, chartreuse or like yellow black back bluegill colored some 2.5 so bigger ones um, bigger uh, chartreuse and reds and then I got some reds in there with the wake bait and these are some small cranks and then some wake baits right there this is my box of deep diving cranks I only had like four or five crank baits to put in there not a whole lot uh, I don't throw these too often um, but I have them just in case if I travel to somewhere where they're on ledges or something like that that's my deep diving crankbait box Right here is my chatterbait box. I just kind of threw a bunch of stuff in here, honestly. It's not all that organized. I have it organized by color right now. But I have about a $500 new tech lures order coming in, and like half of it's chatterbaits, half of it's jigs. So I'm just kind of not really trying too hard to organize my jig box and chatterbait box because I know I'm going to rip it all apart and redo the whole thing once I get my order in. But I just wanted to show you guys that's what my chatterbait box looks like. Just got done with my hook box. I'm actually not really happy with it, um, but it's going to have to do for now because I'm getting tired of organizing and I've got stuff, other stuff to get done throughout the day. But that's just what it looks like for now. You can see I'm missing a lot of that stuff. And the reason why is because I've got them all out here and these are all rusted. So that's why I'm not happy is because they rusted. And I'm, I'm actually pretty good at drying my stuff out after it rains. But I think I'm going to go on TackleBrass.com and get a, a waterproof box for my terminal tackle just so I don't have to throw away all these hooks uh, next year. So for those of you guys starting out or don't use a waterproof box for your hooks, throwing away money is basically all this is, just throwing it away. So go get yourself a waterproof box. So I believe that's pretty much it for today, guys. Hopefully this video wasn't overly long, but you can see I still have a nice mess to clean up. Some of this stuff like this is uh, extras that I need to find a place for that I need to put in a box. A lot of that's just trash. I've just opened new lures, and then that's all the, the tackle and stuff I'm going to go put back in my room. But overall, it didn't take me that long. I think it was about six hours total, in case you guys were wondering. Hopefully you guys learned something, maybe learned some new uh, tackle organization tips, um, gave, you, gave you some ideas. Uh, if, you got, if you saw me doing anything like totally the wrong way or like, oh, no, there's a way better way, uh, make sure you leave a comment. Let me know, like, hey, Andrew, you're an idiot. Don't put your frogs in that box. Put them in this box, whatever. Either way, love to see your guys' suggestions. That's it for today's episode, guys. Thanks for watching.